الحبيب العايش بدلالي غيرك بهذا الكون ما يحلالي انت الحبيب العايش بدلالي غيرك بهذا الكون ما يحلالي غالي اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Our discussion was pertaining to preparing ourselves for the holy month of Ramadan and we covered the importance of dua and supplication and its very fundamental conditions Thereafter, we also covered the importance of fasting and how can one fast meaningfully in this holy month. And we also touched on some other devotions and we said that whenever we pray or whenever we perform any devotion whatsoever in the holy month of Ramadan, it should be meaningfully. It should not be a mere vocalization. Rather, we should aim for epitomization, and that is self-building. If we, for example, were to recite the Holy Qur'an, we should try to epitomize and make ourselves in harmony with the verse that we recite. Small wonder it is that you'll find that some of the riwayat, some of the traditions, clearly say that in the level of Qiyamah, the reciter of the Holy Qur'an would be said, or would be told, Iqra' warqa, that means read and ascend. This clearly tells us that reading the Holy Quran and reciting the Holy Quran should be an introduction to ascension to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thereafter, and therefore, it's very important for us to do everything meaningfully, to recite the Holy Quran and epitomize ourselves, make ourselves according to these verses of the Holy Qur'an. We ended on a very important issue and that is the reality of the doors of uh, paradise and hell fire. What, are, what is the reality of the doors of hell fire and paradise? Because the Holy Qur'an explicitly tells us that the doors of heaven or paradise are eight, whereas the doors of hell fire are seven in number. The mystic scholars and those who vision the realities through their heart have mentioned in their books that the reality of the doors of hellfire are the five senses, the power of imagination, quwa khayaliya, and the power of estimate, quwa wahmiya. These seven faculties of the human being are the reality of the doors of hellfire. Why? Because it is through these faculties a person can either en can engage in sin. All right? And that is why these same scholars have said that the, the doors of paradise are also these seven. But in addition to that, we have another door, which is the door of the heart, which comprehends the reality of the existence of Allah, the attributes of Allah, the reality of belief rests in the uh, qalb and that the heart of the human being. Now when we look at the five senses uh, being the doors of hellfire, we say so because when a person for example looks at those things which are not allowed, which are forbidden in Islam, in reality he is entering the door of hellfire and sometimes because of engaging in sin, he in reality burns, but he cannot comprehend that. Similar is with the case of, for example, the faculty of hearing, audition. A person listens to music and he listens to music and try and gets intoxicated thereby. He doesn't realize the reality that he is in fact engaging in putting himself in hellfire. And so on, you find all the faculties uh, of the, the senses, the five senses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gracefully bestowed on us. 
serve as doors of hellfire for those people who engage in sin and do not obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all these five senses. When it comes to quwa khiyaliya, the power of imagination, you find some people imagining things which are dirty, which are not allowed in Islam, imagining things which cannot be comprehended or which do not uh, come into a normal person's mind, but they do that just to make themselves uh, get enjoyment and so on. This quwa khiyaliya thereafter or therefore serves as a door of hellfire for the person who tries to use it in these vices. And similar is with the case of quwa wahmiya. Quwa wahmiya, the faculty of apprehension or the faculty of estimate according to another translation is that faculty that comprehends uh, particular meanings, for example, hatred for someone, jealousy for another, love for someone. Sometimes you find a person using this faculty for sinful matters and thereafter he, or he literally takes that as a door of hellfire. Now, however, if a person were to use all these five faculties or all these seven faculties for the purpose why they were created for, for example, for the purpose of their creation. He looks at those things which are allowed and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the eye for, for example, or he listens and hears those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anticipates him to do so and so on. When he does that, then these serve as doors and channels of paradise and thereafter the last the channel which is a very important channel and that is the channel of the heart that also serves as a door of paradise but this is not a door of hellfire it is only the door of paradise so in reality it depends on the human soul how does he deal himself how does he keep himself in the holy month of ramadan and so when we say khallisna min an ya rab subhanaka ya la ilaha illa ant Al Ghawth, Al Ghawth, Khalisna min al Nari, Ya Rab. So, oh Allah, release us from the hellfire. Oh Lord, when we try to plead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this, we in reality understand, or we should understand, that we have engaged ourselves in vices and we have entered the doors of hellfire. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should release us from the hellfire that we are burning with but we cannot comprehend because we look at this material macrocosm the material universe we don't look at the higher realities that is for example the alamul malakut that is the the depth and the inner realm of this same world the inner reality of this same world because if you go and see the scholars the philosophers the islamic philosophers divide the whole macrocosm and the universe into three layers, three fundamental layers. Otherwise, Gnostic scholars have also given other divisions which are higher. But then, because we don't want to go into details, I will look at these three fundamental layers of existence, which is extremely important. The first of these layers is Alamul Mulk, and that is. Uh, the physical and the material and the corporeal existence that we see. The second layer, which, which is a higher layer, is known as Alamul Malakut or Alamul Barzakh. It is a layer which is higher than this layer of existence. And when I say higher than this layer of existence, I don't mean that there is a parallel layer of existence to this layer of existence that we are in. Rather, it is the inner reality of this same layer which is depicted in Barzakh. And then a higher reality to that is depict, depicted in the layer of Qiyamah. So in reality, we have three layers. One is Alamul Mulk, the corporeal realm, the physical realm that we see. We have Alamul Barzakh or Alamul Mithal, the imaginal realm or the realm of Barzakh. And then we have the Alamul Qiyama or Alamul Aql. And that is the intellectual realm or the realm of Qiyama. 
So Qiyamah in reality is not a parallel realm to this world. Barzakh is not a parallel reality to this world. No, all of them are interconnected. All of them serve as manifestations of each other. The lower serves as the manifestation of the higher. So the dunya serves as the manifestation of Barzakh and the Barzakh serves as a manifestation of the hereafter and that is Al Qiyamah. And therefore, whatever happens in this world also happens in the hereafter and it has another reality which is more subtler, which is more intellectual, which is more higher. And that is why <coughs> in some of the verses of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hints to us about this, not directly but indirectly. For example, uh, with regard to those people who eat the uh, the property of the orphans out of oppression Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says innama yaakuluna fi butunihim nara surely they are eating in their uh, bellies hellfire they are eating hellfire they are eating fire in, and ingesting fire into their bellies this is the reality of those who eat the property of orphans out of zulm or for example with regard to a person who is backbiting one who backbites, one who says evil things or things, <coughs> the deficiencies of a person. He narrates the deficiencies of a person. He's known as one who backbites. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do you love to eat the dead meat of your brother? Of course you don't. فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ you don't, do, you don't like that. But the reality is when you start backbiting, you in reality are eating the dead meat of your brother, your own brother. Thus the uh, word backbiting, literally backbiting. A person backbites, that means he really eats the flesh of his dead brother. But then because we can only see this physical realm, that is why we cannot say that, for example, we really are eating the flesh of somebody else. There is a very important anecdote that transpired during the time of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Two women started backbiting others and the Prophet came to these two women and said, bring, he ordered or he told somebody to bring a container and the Prophet came near the two women and said, now vo start vomiting over on this. And when they vomited, literally they saw that they vomited pus flesh and blood. Why? Because the Holy Prophet put an influence in their existence so that they could understand that in reality what they are vomiting is these things. Not that in the physical realm they saw that pus and blood and flesh is coming out. No. But the Holy Prophet made them trans get transported in the barzakhi realm, in the higher realm, to see the reality of what they have really eaten while they did their backbiting. And even the others who witnessed and who narrated this tradition, the Holy Prophet influenced their hearts so that they can comprehend the higher realities. Otherwise, if we could do that, we could comprehend, we would never backbite because at the moment we are backbiting, we are literally eating the food or we are e literally eating the dead flesh of our brother. This is something that really transpires, but we cannot comprehend because we are insulated with this physical body because we have curtains in our hearts and that is why we cannot uh, vision the reality. Similar when it comes to good deeds, if you look at the reality of the barzakh, the barzakhi reality of good deeds, a person doing a good deed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time in the higher realm gifts that person with something very important and very good. They narrate about Allama Muhammad Hussain Tabatabai that in Masjid Kufa his, uh, of course, he was trained by one of the great mystic saints known as Sayyid Ali Qadi Tabatabai. And once Allama Tabatabai happened to go to Masjid Kufa and he was reciting dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and all of a sudden he saw a Hurul Ain coming and giving him a cup of uh, heavenly wine. And he did not concentrate and did not pay attention to that damsel, she came from the left side, she came from the right side, 
But Allah Matabatubai did not pay attention. Mind you, that damsel or that huri was not coming in this world, in this physical plane of existence. No. She was coming in that higher realm of existence and that is Barzakh. Be but because Allah Matabatubai could see that realm, that is why he could see that, that huri coming to him. Now, if you look, if you analyze the reality of this, you find that the dhikr that Allama At-Tabatabai was doing, this is how the analysts have analyzed this incident, that the dhikr that Allah, Allama At-Tabatabai was doing was in reality creating that Hurul Ain. Very important. You see, your own actions create these beautiful things of paradise. It's not something from uh, outside, no. The human being is so powerful that when he does good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made him ontologically as such that he can create these things. He is the one who creates the paradise by saying subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. By doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is building a palace for himself. That palace is even more strong than what is existing here because it is of the of a higher realm. This is a very raw, lower low realm of existence such that a person when he goes to that higher realm he comes to realize that this is nothing that where he was inhabiting was nothing. Therefore the reality is that whatever we do in this world has a repercussion in the higher world. Rather whatever we do is a lower manifestation of what exists in the higher realms of existence. Insha'Allah, we'll continue in our next episode into the details and the, of the reality of uh, the hellfire and paradise as we continue talking about the importance of purification of our souls in this holy month of Ramadan, which is really an opportunity that although recurs, but we are not sure whether we can really encounter it again or not. Obviously, we are completely hopeful to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And rather, even when the holy month of Ramadan is about to leave, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that enable us to encounter the holy month of Ramadan, Ramadan once again. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he does all this for us. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وصلى الله على محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين انت الحبيب العايش بدلالي غيرك بهذا الكون ما يحلالي انت الحبيب العايش بدلالي غيرك بهذا الكون ما يحلالي غالي 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 ابو السجاد حبك غالي غالي ابو السجاد حبك غالي العشق قالوا مر